and I can meet you tonight With your blue jeans on, you never look so cold Where are you tonight? Yeah, I could kill you tonight With my wisdom teeth out, I never felt so cold Welcome to the House of Spirits Game Review. Ah, well, enough of that. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, Lock and Load's House of Spirits card game. Uh, it's a kind of a fun 72 card game that uh, leads you through an investigator going through an ancient or mysterious haunted house filled with monsters and mysterious plots and items that help you get through. Um, I received mine in the mail and as soon as I opened it the box was horribly flimsy and now it became a Ziploc bag game. Uh, needs a little bit, bit stronger box for I think and I'm just a little bit nervous about it so I decided to go to Ziploc bag. Uh, it does a really good job capturing the theme of adventuring through a haunted house, and uh, I thought we would uh, go and take a look at it now. Uh, so here's the game and the components. Ooh. Buyer beware, this game needs dice and it does not come with it, so I suggest maybe going to steal the dice out of your Monopoly game. You know you're not using them. Uh, the rule book is uh, small. It doesn't really have any uh, illustrations or to help you, but it does have some examples on the bottom of the page to tell you how to play certain rules. Um, it wasn't too bad. There was some inconsistencies and some misspelling grammatical things, but I, uh, you know, it it read pretty well. It got the game uh, across fairly well. First thing is you have to pick a character. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one. And that is Olivia Wonderhurst. And you can see her abilities. Uh, she can play a plot card once uh, the same round she uh, obtains it. That's a one-time ability. Some characters have one-time abilities and some people have multiple abilities. She also may re-roll an attack roll, but must accept the second roll. She may do this multiple times. Okay, so she can... Not bad character for a good starting game. Secondly, we must pick a secret victory. Uh, and I'll just pick one of these. And, oh, look it. Must have full health at the end of the day. game. Excellent. Okay, once I have my character and my secret victory, we can start the rooms. I mix these up. And you always start with the vestibule on top. Here's monster cards, in case we encounter them. Here's main cards. These are the items and things you might get if uh, there's no monsters. And then there's plot cards. These are the things that will determine the win of the game. There's about seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have to go through all seven plots. Once you do, you won the game. Uh, some plots are easy to play. Some have to be in a particular room or have a certain item. And the game begins. Um, the best of you... It's a two-person two game, so let's say the other character that's with me is Sir Hampton Cross. Um, and they're both in, so you always draw the number of cards that matches the number of characters playing. So I would draw two main cards in the first room. This is an opportunity to get items that assist you. Um, we should have determined who was playing first. Let's say Olivia was, so she picks first, and she wants... Uh, since it kind of works into her secret victory, she's going to go ahead and take the first aid. And Cross is going to go ahead, and Sir Hampton is going to go ahead and take the revolver. Now, uh, we have a indicator uh, who is first. Um, and this also has a nice little guide to the, the breakdown of what you can do each round. And the scoring. Now, this is a cooperative game, but both characters continue to score. And whoever has the most points does win so it's still cooperative yet somebody's still gonna win this one okay excellent okay round one uh since the room has been emptied of uh, all items and there's no monsters if ever a room has no monsters you flip to the next room and now we go to the attic as you can see there's 
two skulls in the attic. So what you do is if you roll one six-sided dice, if it's one or a two, then we draw a monster for that character. If there's higher, then, then you draw a main or an item thing. So here we go ahead and roll. Olivia, no monster. And uh, Sir Hampton, no monster. Let's say I would have rolled uh, a one for Sir Hampton. So then we draw a monster for him. There's a zombie in the room, and then there's an item in the room. Since we decided that... Uh, since we decided that uh, Sir Hampton is now first, uh, he has to attack the monster. You have to attack the monster once. So um, he goes ahead and attacks. His strength is three and the monster's defense is two. Uh, so if he wants to, he's gonna go ahead and use his revolver. That gives him a plus two. So that's five. We do a dice roll, three. So three plus five is eight. Now the monster has a two and he has a defensive roll. Uh, two plus three is five. So Sir Hampton actually hits and causes one point of damage to uh, the zombie. Um, if Sir Hampton wanted to, uh, or if he had rolled a higher number, let's say he rolled a six, plus five is 11, and there was just no way the creature could actually defend itself against that roll, because if you rolled a six and a two, that's only eight, and that's still three behind. Then we could have said that was a critical hit, and that was a killing blow to the zombie. Um, if you kill a creature, it becomes, uh, you just record the points. It's the three points per kill for a monster. And you put that off to the side in a discard pile, and you continue to play. Uh, one of the rules the game book, uh, the rule book didn't really address is, oh, who does the monster attack? If it survives your attack, there's three characters and three monsters in a room. Who do they attack? I thought the game would greatly take advantage of these little charts uh, that I learned from the old TSR books games. Uh, for instance, I call this one the monster attack reaction chart. It's basically a 2d6 roll. Uh, roll two six-sided dice and determine the lower number you roll, uh, bad things start to happen. Leadership, all monsters attack one character. Uh, the most common roll is six through eight. A fair fight, all monsters attack a different character. Three to five, twilight, it's getting darker. They get in a rage and they attack with a plus one. The opposite, nine through 11 is dawn and they attack a negative one because they're a little bit weaker because light's coming out. And finally, 12 is a frenzy because the monsters uh, with the most... The monster with the most health attacks the weakest monster. Um, <clears throat> and then determine maybe a two player game. We thought we were always playing uh, first player, uh, a roll one to three, they get attacked. Uh, second player, four to six roll gets them attacked. Of course, if it's three players, you could do one to two, three to four, five to six, like we did a lot of that. If it's four or more players, you could do a roll of six sided, one, two, three, four, five, six, you roll over, and so on and so forth. Uh, kind of a neat little system to determine who gets attacked and a little bit of different variety in the game, making it more interesting. Uh, one of the things that really bothered me about this game was um, some of the victory conditions are, as you can see, tuned for the specific character. Um, she can reuse items over and over again, and her victory condition is uh, to have four or more cards in her hand. Him is at the least amount of cards in his hand for victory condition, and his special ability is he can discard cards for an automatic successful investigation. It seemed like these cards, when they matched up to the character, were an incredible advantage. It seems like some of the victory conditions should have been weighed a little bit differently. Maybe some of these easier ones that just killing somebody or ending the game with full health or killing something with a, a weapon or maybe just ending with two defensive items might have been deemed a lesser point value. Uh, maybe each character should have had its own special uh, victory condition geared towards their ability, whereas just some of them have that. That was one thing I really struggled with. Um, it could be a really unfair advantage for one character to have something that totally plays into their special ability. I survived the night and I made it back to the house. It's morning time and now I can speak about the conclusion of House of Spirits. Uh, the game did a really good job capturing the essence of what it was like to investigate a haunted house or a mysterious house. Um, I thought some of the problems, the negative things were uh, 
the unfair way they devised the victory point system, um, the lack of variety in the monsters. There was only ten monsters, and four of them were duplicated. And um, just the lack of variety in the plots. There was only one set of seven plots, and then once you played it a couple times, uh, they weren't that interesting. They got really boring. You didn't want to read them anymore. Uh, I thought maybe if there was a secondary set of plots or some interesting way to mix up the plot system, it would have been really interesting um, and maybe had a variety, like up to 24 cards, and then they each did something different, kind of interesting. We really made a, a great enhancement to the game. As it stands, without that kind of an expansion, I would say I have to give the game roughly around a 6.5 or a 6. Um, I'm in that range. Uh, some people will find it very interesting because of the theme. You can play it in the fall or near October. I, I think I would pull it out for a Halloween party or something kind of fun. And uh, otherwise, it, it might not get played the rest of the year that much. So definitely something to consider. I'm Kevin Wenzel. This is 2d6.org. And uh, keep playing. Meet you tonight with the blue jeans on. You never look so cool. Where are you tonight? Yeah, I could kill you tonight with my wizard teeth. I, I never felt so cold. Yeah, I'm standing in the night. We're in the land of a haunted house. We're in the land of a haunted house. Where are you tonight? You should tonight All you have to do With your rubber boots With paints back inside The drums beat harder tonight And all you have to do You can't get no see